Hi, this is Martin Van Buren from Getting Stuff Done. Well, today I'm going to talk you through some of the components of a pop-up sprinkler irrigation system. So let's jump straight in. So what we've done is um, we, we're running a few different zones here from a pump where some of the zones runs to irrigate your grass and there's say three or four zones for the different uh, however big your garden is and then a separate zone is for my flowers the reason i've set up different zones is because grass i might only want to water once a week or once every other week but the flower beds i'll probably want to do more regularly so you can buy these as ready-made kits which are made for particular areas like 50 square meters or 100 or 200 they can be quite pricey if you do it that way what i tended to do is because i've also got a larger area and uh, i've got multiple zones i tended to buy the components separately and then put all the system together so i'm going to talk you through uh, sort of an end-to-end -end system what that would look like and what these components look like the system we're trying to get to is where you come in sort of like in the middle down with a pipe and then you branch off each side connecting your sprinklers like that or sort of a U shape where you've got your initial pipe coming in for this zone you branch off two branches and then come down with say three sprinklers on that line and three sprinklers on that line something like that what you don't want to do is like this where you create this daisy chain effects of say five or six sprinklers where you come in from the top and you connect them like this because what will happen is this one will pop up all the way to a high and the lowest point you probably will have very little pressure there because all the water has been used by the sprinklers before so you want to kind of branch off the sprinklers a little bit I'm going to start from the pump. So my pump's actually plugged in. So I'll just use the box here for illustration purposes. So you've got your inlet, your pump, where the water is sucked up through a, a suction hose. Uh, these are one inch connectors on my particular pump. Uh, you want to make sure that your inflow is always bigger or the same size as your outflow. Otherwise your pump is going to be working really hard to suck not very much water. At the top end, I've got a male fitting there one inch so from there I would use something like this this is a, a an adapter female adapter one inch and then this compression fitting can go to whatever size my pipe is going to be so these pipes I'm using MDP pipes now these pipes this is a example of a 20 millimeter MDP pipe they come in rolls of 25 50 100 meters um, they're really nice sturdy some of them have even got markers on every meter that if you've used say half of it you know exactly how many meters you've got left on your pipe you can go down to 13 millimeter on some of the systems uh, so real for, for small systems i needed something more robust and sturdy which is why i've chosen uh, to use uh, 20 millimeters in between the pump and the system i have solenoid valves which is basically a mechanism to open and close the system and something like this which is the control unit for the system now i'm not going to talk through all of this stuff because it gets a bit complicated i'll do a separate video on how these things and how to install and, and connect them for now i'm just going to assume you turn your pump on you turn your pump off and we start running the system from there so you've got your female adapter which screws onto your pump from there you run your pipes wherever you need to go just simply plug them in one thing I also use is these um, little liners. That just stiffens up the joints of the pipe when I make my connections to make sure they fit nice and snug. So I pop in a, a, a liner into my pipes and start my connections. And then if I was going to run down to uh, something like this branch, for example, we're coming down and we're doing one of these branches. So when I get to here, initially I would use a, a T like that. Uh, which is uh, this is a 20 millimeter T to do the initial branching on this point here so I'll run my inlet pipe from my pump coming into the top here we'll branch off here and we'll start the, uh, the system from there so what we'll do is we'll get to our first connection right running off there and we're gonna get these you get these little compression fittings again a, a, a branch T with a male thread, I think this is a half inch male thread, where your pipe would come in each end, carry on to the next. So down here, for example, if we were carrying on, coming in and going out of this pipe, so it comes in, goes out, and your pop-up sprinkler would sit 
in the top there like that. This would be covered all underground and depending on how long your sprinkler pop out is, it might be two inches or four inches or even six inches. I know there are longer ones. Um, I think this is four inch uh, that I'm using that we use to, to pop out. You do get these connections that, are, that look like uh, an elbow coming out here and one going out there to form a 90 degree bend. You do get those ones as well. Um, I don't have any of these, so I'm just using this. Sounds like it's ice cream time. Then from there, I would carry on to my next one. And let's say, for example, on that one, I'm gonna simply pass through again, like the second, the second picture over there, gonna pass through with the same type of fitting, the T, pop in my sprinkler in the top, carry on to my next one at the end and the end one would have something like this uh, just a simple elbow where your MDP pipe would come into there it's got an elbow on there and it that one would sit like that on top of the uh, on top of the elbow screwed into that on the other branch so we would run again through this first one through the second one with a sprinkler head the third one down here at the end of one of our lines wherever we want to do probably the lowest point. We're gonna put on our last sprinkler, but instead of doing that elbow, um, this one with the end to end my system, I would again add a pass through, and then I'm going to end my system with something like this. So what this is, let me open this packet for you. This is a drainage valve. And what this does, so I might use say an elbow, pop it in there, MDP fitting goes in there, and it ends in the draining valve, or I could just use a straight fitting like this, where this would uh, screw into there um, and be buried underground, say in um, gravel or something, or might even be able to want to get to the drainage valve. What this does is when your system is, uh, we've got a guest on our show today. Hello, Puss Puss. This is Sugar, this is our neighbor, neighbor's cat, and to us, he's known as Panther. So he eats there and he eats here and he's very happy. Now, Thank you for visiting, we'll just carry on. <laughs> so what this drainage valve does is when your system is compressed, it will close itself and your, your, your sprinklers will pop up as normal and, and work perfectly fine. When the system is off, the valve releases and the excess water can drain off. So that for example, in winter time, there's not any water left in your system that when your system freezes up, it will um, expand and burst your pipes. So really good to have something like that on your um, uh, on your system. Right, I want to quickly talk about just a, a couple of the other things that I use. So in terms of the, the fittings themselves, to connect them, I tend to use these water pump pliers. They can shift up or down like that, that you just use. And I do have another video that shows you how to make a, a secure connection for these fittings. Another thing I want to show you is the actual tools that I use to cut the pipes. So I've got a pipe cutter which cuts various different sizes, uh, which makes a really nice clear cut when it comes to wanting to connect my pipe. So I've got quite a lot of fittings and sprinklers here, so doing that makes it really easy. But if you don't have something like that, a secateurs would work perfectly well where you just pop it on the side, hold it and sort of spin it around and it will create a nice clean cut as well. If you use a sort of a hacksaw, it does tend to leave little bits there and you don't really want that getting into your system and clogging up your sprayers. So the second last thing I wanna show you is the sprinklers, which have these little collars, they guard collars. Um, they slide in from the bottom and they provide, when, you're, when you're, uh, the ground would come up to here, this is what would be um, protecting, let's say you were lawn, mowing your lawn or something, just gives a little bit of extra protection there for your sprinkler head. So they're quite handy to have. And then lastly, I want to show you some of the sprinklers as well. Now, really when you're choosing your, your system, this is really a component that all of it comes down to. It's your sprinkler heads. Everything else is uh, parts that you can buy from any, any different um, supplier. You can mix and match and it doesn't really matter. The sprinkler heads themselves is what you want to decide which particular brand you like. You can put different brands on your different components. I don't think it's going to make a, a huge difference because it's a, it's a self-contained unit. It pushes water in and they all function different. Some of them are just, when the water comes through, they just spray the water everywhere. Some of them are like rotors, 
or turbines that sort of work like spraying a unit. Depends how much pressure you've got, you've got in your system. Now, I want to show you some of the sprinklers that I've got here. So these units, when they pop up, they'll pop up two, four, six inches, however long. I use four inches for my sprayers. The type of sprayer, so this particular sprayer sits at the end here and it sprays a jet spray, which is quite handy for a pathway or something like that, or next to a pathway where it's quite narrow. The next particular spray is the same principle where it's got a narrow band and in the middle there your sprinkler would sit and do a sort of a band along a, a narrow stretch, maybe one and a half meters depending on your pressure. These ones are circular sprayers. Now you get these in 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 360 degrees and this particular one is quite nifty because it does an adjusting from 0 to 350 degrees so that's quite handy my final sprinkler these are the ones i've got quite a few of and these are square ones so the sprayer sits in the middle rather than being a round circle that at the edges you've got to put a 90 degree sprayer another one in the middle covering and then you've got these patches around the edges that's not going to receive water now depending on the amount of bars that you have in your on your system will depend on how close or far you put them i'll do a separate video that shows you how to set up the system do your initial test and make your adjustments before you put all of this in the ground so really that's some of the the components of the system i wanted to show you today uh, fairly easy the biggest thing really to get your head around is simply this which pop-up sprinklers do you want to go all of the rest is standard fittings that you can get from any of your plumber uh, companies or, or merchants around you. There are many, many different suppliers and you can see just how different these fittings are. I mean, they really are all different shapes, different sizes, but they all pretty much work on the same principle. So it doesn't really matter too much what brand you get, as long as they're nice and sturdy, they'll do the job nicely. Compare the prices, some of them will charge three times as much. Now, if you're buying 10 of those, it's gonna get really, really expensive. Again, the same with the pipes, buy them in length, um, just shop around for your prices, uh, and you'll be able to put your system in fairly cheaply, but the, the sprinklers can, can is, is what makes the big difference. For today, that's the components I've got for you. Give it a go, any questions, pop them down in the, in the comments and uh, hope to speak to you soon. See you next time, bye.